Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. A uh, happy Tuesday to you all. Well, hopefully, your day is going brilliantly. Or if you're watching this at any other point in the week, hopefully, having a great day nonetheless. We return with the guys from Vanner because we checked out their title track yesterday, um, titled Automatic. It was a brilliant time. But now, I mentioned it then. I wanted to get around to the B sides because I wanted to do Vanner properly i wanted to do their music the justice that they deserved especially me not having checked out any other b-sides like we got a handful of them when they were on dingo rising voice with Xenary heroes uh back when they did performer right their first era after their peak time success i missed the last album because they released music while i was away and so now, third time lucky, we got to do the whole thing. So, Vanner's Burn EP. I'm very excited to get into it because, well, one thing I've learned very quickly is give them high energy music and they are going to own the living daylights out of it. And I'm hoping that a good majority of these B-sides are going to go in that direction and whatever isn't is going to surprise me. So... Very short on the waffle. Let's roll the intro. Let's get started, shall we? Here we go. I need a haircut. My hair's getting too long. I need to break out the hairband soon. My goodness. I'm pretty sure when we checked the performer, I had the hairband out. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I don't remember. Any hoosers. Um, I would have liked if they had color-coded lyrics um, for all the B-sides, because I do desperately need to learn who the members are and what they sound like. Unfortunately, those aren't available online as of yet. No one has made any, and that's, that's a slight shame. I'm going to see if Genius.com has any quickly while um, we start the first song, so... If I'm like kind of distracted on the other screen, that's what I'm doing. But for those of you who are with me for the first time uh, with an album listen, what we usually do is I have the credits list pulled up on the second screen. And then before every single song, I read off the credits of the people who are responsible for the bits and pieces behind the scenes because credit needs to be given where credit is due. We'll do that for every single song moving forward and then just listen through the song. I'll say my piece afterwards and then rinse and repeat. Cool. Cool. Let's get started. Track number one, title Revolver. Lyrics by Gon, uh, Kim Daul of Jam Factory. Composition Stereo 14, Woon Kim, Albin Nordquist, Gabriel Brandes with Woon Kim and Stereo 14 on arrangement. So we have member composition or er, member lyric credit and then some familiar names on composition. Hell yeah. Oh. Early rappers, hello. Dang. Genius.com doesn't have any lyric distribution either. That's fine. Oh, that's why volume's maxed out. I'm sorry if it was loud on your ears there. Firm bottom end. I didn't even notice the octave modulation at the end, I revolve. You know what revolver is kind of like compositionally? It's a similar structure to Le Seraphim's Unforgiven, because it's got that kind of modern dance beat, but it's paired with that electric guitar beat in the background as well. That's really cool. I mean, sonically, it's very different, but the formula is very similar. Oh, 
That's really cool that that guitar part is like kind of sustained throughout the chorus. Oh, octave it down this time. how firm this song is. Oh my goodness. It doesn't hold anything back. Oh, we are off to a great start. Yes, we are. That is terrific. And um, I find it funny that Revol both Revolver and Automatic have, you know, the title of the song is that one word, right? It's a decently long word, like Revolver, three syllables, Automatic is four syllables even. But, like, the main kind of, like, catch hook of the chorus, both parts, is that repeated title word, and it's kind of modified every single time they use it. And I think that's kind of neat. It's, it's such a small detail, but... Revolver's nice. Revolver's nice. It's got a nice weightiness to it from that rock guitar. Nice, heavy, persistent 808 to support it. But then it's combined with quite a modern beat, and I think it's almost like an internal conflict with itself, where, especially on that course, you've got that guitar trying to do its melody thing. You've got the modern beat trying to do its modern thing. you got that bass kind of being like the glue that's holding the two together and it it kind of like fluctuates between which one gets priority almost and i think that's really neat because it's not two commonly used uh styles of music put together especially in the k-pop realm like you get heavy 808 you get heavy edm you get heavy rock you get heavy modern dance but it's rare to see that rock guitar paired with the kind of like the bare bones of the EDM genre, so to speak. Like, you get the bass, digital bass, electric guitar. That's a combo that I feel like is underexplored, shall we say. I think it's... Maybe it's not underexplored. Maybe it's just the final kind of product that Revolver is, is kind of a unique sound. Because, you know, I mentioned Le Seraphim's Unforgiven earlier. That, of course, had the legendary Nile Rodgers on guitar. And that, I guess, like, style-wise, kind of had a Western uh, swing to it, which made it work. And there's been various songs that kind of transform from a rock beat to an EDM beat, right? I'm pretty sure we had a... We had a song very recently. Oh, P1 Harmony. P1 Harmony's Last Call was a... It was a rock-based song that was composed in the style of an EDM banger. I feel like Revolver is like... We're gonna meet in the middle. We're gonna meet in the middle in a way that you don't expect it to happen. I like it, though. Do I, do I like it over automatic? I don't know. It might be close. Off of first listen, it might be pretty close. Now... Normally, track number two would be the title track, Automatic. Since we spent time on it on its own some, we're not going to do it tonight. But I'm still going to read off the credits one time. So, track number two, Automatic, the title track. Lyrics by Gon and Lee Jin Woo of Jam Factory. Uh, composition, Woon Kim. Stereo 14, Andreas Orn. Uh, Jimmy Clayson. And, oh, remember, Gon on composition as well. We love to see it. Um, arrangement Sarah 14 and Woon Kim, which takes us to the next of the new B sides. Track of number three, New Heights. Lyrics by Glody and Yi Ju oh, Hyun and Sarah J. Composition Glody. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. QSTN Marks. Question Marks? Sure. Um, Savan, DK, Lori, Dean Robert, and Bros. 
with the same members on arrangement. So this is the first of the uh, songs that don't have any member compositions on it. It also has a completely new um, composition team. Right? Yeah, none of the people from previous songs, and in fact, none of the people on any of the other songs are on this. So this is just a unique song altogether. That's cool. Surprisingly bright, isn't it? I'm trying to think of what this reminds me of because it reminds me of something. Long build for the drop. It's a very kind of free flowing song. Like it's. It doesn't feel like it's being restricted by anything, it just kind of cruises on its own pace. But yeah, like, following up Revolver and Automatic, this is a very light song. Even with that kind of snappy driving beat, you don't really feel that bottom end as much as the previous two songs. That release is very satisfying though. It's got just the right amount of crash. Whoever is singing here, very charming vocal color. I think it shines really well on a bright light song like this. They really dropped it out for the bridge, okay. Again, just the right amount of crash there. I guess we should call it the release more than anything, but... Nice! It's a it's a terrific little bop. Um I've quickly gone on the Spooter Fees and looked up who some of these producers were. It looks like there's a lot of electro um producers. Or kind of uh more like electronic based producers on board, like Question Marks is, is a team, apparently, and they've done stuff for uh, Yun Sana, Solo Drop, Aces Anymore, but a lot of original stuff. Um, Lori, first, uh, first Genius Credit. Glody has done a decent amount of stuff, actually. But, yeah, it's, I think New Heights for me is kind of like a palate cleanser in a way, because Revolver, Revolver, you get the meat and, I guess, Revolver kind of supplies you with the bass, automatic cranks up the energy, and it's like Revolver's the, um, the Revolver is your starter, automatic is your main, and New Heights is like the... Not the dessert, but like the, 
you know, the kind of side dish you get at fancy restaurants that's meant to kind of lighten the load, you know, like a natural digestive, so to speak. It feels like that because it's really palatable for me. There's nothing like sharp about it that sticks out or is meant to really just pull your attention in. You just press play, you let it run and just vibe along to it. And again, Vanner do a terrific job of handling music with pace behind it and new heights even though it's light it's still decently quick and it feels very on brand for them and i i'm telling you i don't know if i can confidently name a group that just understands how to do the right amount of speed for a song than with vanner i've never thought about that question but like genuinely thinking about it i don't know if i can name any who can just consistently do speed really well because vanner songs for me never feel like they're about to run away from you but they have just the right amount of speed to just really let your body enjoy it mm. <laughs> now this is the one that had me very curious looking at the credits list because this is track number four titled blossom lyrics by suyun Mr. Yi Gi Kwang of Highlight and Moon Kim. Composition Pak Su Sok So Ji Un Moon Kim and Mr. Yi Gi Kwang with Pak Su Sok and So Ji Un on arrangement. Ki Kwang got involved on composition and lyrics on this. That's really cool. I don't know where the connection is for this. Um, I tried looking up like if there was any label connection to this and I couldn't find any because... Vanner under Clap, um, Geekwang is under Around Us, like their own label. I guess I should say Highlight slash Beast's own label, who themselves, of course, has a sub group and a boy group of their own with The Wind, who debuted last year. Geekwang also dropping the work of art that was Predator last year that I unfortunately missed and I'm still very sad about. Um, but, yeah. Kikwang composer. That, that I'm very curious about this one. We're slowing it down a little bit. All right, let's see how you guys deal with the slower song. I made my whole spiel about them understanding speed, but. Ooh. Nice heavy 808. Holy dreamy mixing. You know what? Maybe Vander don't need speed all the time. You know what? This one might be a sneaky pick. Who is singing here? Such a charming voice. Like, it's the pacing for an absolutely perfect anthem. But it's got a terrific heaviness in the instrumental and a terrific lightness in the vocals. Offsetting the high vocal with the low vocal for the bridge, extremely smart. It's amazing how long that reverb is. Love all the vocal parts going on here. Ma 
modified final chorus is also absolutely brilliant. The super long reverb is back. And I love that that riff is kind of perpetual throughout the entire song, but... Okay! Yeah, Blossom is nice. It's It's got a terrific warmth to it that's very satisfying. Very um, easy on the ears to enjoy. And... Man, just... It feels exactly like what you want a song to do. Like, there's... When it comes to, you know how the verse progresses, how the pre-chorus drops a song off, how you want the chorus release to happen. I feel like Blossom does everything exactly how I want the song to be, just based off of how the song feels. Especially when that super long reverb gets thrown into the mix on the pre-choruses. That reverb lasts for so long on the song. It might be one of the longest reverbs I've heard out of a K-pop song. And this is including OSTs, and OSTs oftentimes use a lot of reverb, but... Oh my goodness, the reverb just goes on for so long. It goes on for so long, in fact, that, um... I think it was... Was this... After the second chorus? Let me actually try and find it real quick. It's right there. So you get, um, I think that might be second, or that might be second. No, it's bridge into final chorus, I think. Anyways, what it does is the reverb is still so long at that point that just as when you think the vocal line finally trails off, the riser is already here. It, instead of getting that gap in the middle where there's just the instrumental riff, you have the downward curve of the vocal line dispersing away, and then right as it ends, the white noise riser immediately connects to it. So there's really no technical like moment of silence in the song because it just transitions immediately onto that next curve, and I think that's so cool. Oh, that mm, Blossom might be giving Revolver a run for his money right now. And not just because Gi Kwang is on composition, it's that genuinely Blossom is terrific. Um, but we keep moving. Track at number five, Accelerate, spelled it. Capital X, Accelerate. Um, lyrics by Ha Dual Water 153 Jumbus and. My Hangul is not very good, so I'm going to use Genius. Hold on a second. Um, Kelbil of 153 June bus, so it looks like we have yet another music team getting involved. I guess this is just for lyrics, though. And then, composition, Daniel Kim and Scott Russell Stoddart, with Scott Russell Stoddart on arrangement. That's a familiar name. So we're really gonna lean into that heavy sound, aren't we? Oh. How, how have they managed to get a sound that almost feels industrial without having any of that industrial clanging going on? Yeah, I still can't get the, um, that kind of industrial sound out of my head. Although, having said that... Keep all the vocals one time. We elevate, no limit, no shame. Parachute dying up so don't care. Well, I want to figure out something. Daniel Kim and Scott Russell Stoddart. Nobody can handle me. 
Today I learned Daniel Kim is the vocalist of Wave to Earth. That's cool. My god, the heaviness is terrific. Then the vocals just expand. Oh, keep that beat going. I thought they'd maybe go just with that twinkling chime transition, but no. Keep it driving. I'm just... Banner are really surprising me on this album. Just across the board, there's a lot of stuff that I'm learning about them. Man, with how, like, deep that vocal part is to finish the chorus, I'm... There might be all four members involved with that chorus by the end of it. That's crazy. Also, one of the cool advantages of a smaller numbered group is the fact that you don't have a whole bunch of vocal combinations, but you get more if you stack more than two members at a time. Obviously, Vanner is showing that oh, they can go with some very deep, rich vocals. Um, the one thing I wanted to look up was to see if either Daniel Kim or Scott Russell Stoddart had worked on any um had worked on any P1 Harmony songs. So this feels like and it, I mean I'm going to say this in the best way possible. This feels like a P1 Harmony song to me and I think that's just really neat cuz it's it's a sound that not many artists can get right, I think. But for Vanner, even with them being a very, for me at least, you know, before getting into Accelerate, Vanner for me were a very kind of pace-oriented group with some really rich vocal parts. But Accelerate has kind of shown that we can, we can tone down the melodicness of the instrumental section. We can tone down the speed of which the song goes on. We're still going to drop our little vocal charm in there, and you're going to like it. And I really liked it. In a weird kind of roundabout way, it's it's a song that kind of takes me out of my comfort zone, so to speak, as like with Vanner and what I kind of preemptively guessed was, you know, Vanner's sound. And it's slowly expanding that. And I think that's really neat, because I think this is cleverly written. Yeah, I I I'm amazed how well they can balance that heaviness though I this really is a couple of like metal pipe clangs away from being a very industrial based kind of a poppy song like for example P1 Harmony's Back Down I think P1 Harmony's Back Down might be faster than Accelerate but it, it's that same idea and if you know the song that I'm talking about P1 Harmony's Back Down I think you'll understand where I'm coming at from this but Nice. And then one final song on the album track on number six titled Be Together. Lyrics by members Gon and Songkook. Uh, composition Pak Su Sok So Jun Moon Kim with Pak Su Sok and So Jun on arrangement. Guessing by the placement of the song on the album, as well as the credits, especially in the lyric department, is this a fan song? I'm waiting for this bloom, and I reckon this bloom is going to be very pretty. <laughs> Ooh. 
It's so lighthearted. This also reminds me of something that I can't remember the name of. But this definitely screams fan song. Like, it's got the kind of musical style of a fan song, doesn't it? I oh, love the extra twinkle that that acoustic piano adds there. What does that release remind me of? This chorus really reminds me of something. All of them driving nuts. I can't get too hung up on that. I need to enjoy this song while it's here. Firm bass. Long build. Yeah, I, I can't help but to enjoy this. It's so easy to enjoy. Even with me still hung up on trying to remember what song this reminds me of. Nice. It's kind of adorable. It's feel good. It's very lighthearted. What more could you want, right? And I am like this. I'm. I would say it's a 90% safe guess that this is probably a fan song. Does that change my opinion on it? Absolutely not. It's a terrific song. And the fact that, you know, this could be a song for the fans, I think it just makes it even better, honestly. Hey. G-O-D is a bit better What song is that? Sky Blue Promise by G-O-D, I think. Um... Oh! Thank you, Brain, for actually remembering something properly. Sky Blue Promise by G-O-D, that's what this song reminds me of. I kinda love it. I... Okay, off rip. I'm gonna say this right now, this is a terrific album. Like, this is a 6 for 6 album for me. But Be Together specifically is a terrific finisher. And honestly, we haven't had that many fan songs drop this year, I feel like. And the reason why I say that is every time we listen to an album, I kind of bring this up, but an album structure, there's a purpose behind how an album is structured in terms of what songs go where. The last song in an album is very important because it's kind of a pretty powerful song in the what creates the overall kind of feeling of what the album is like as you listen to it whether you finish on a really soft ballad that feels like it's the natural conclusion of the story or whether you finish on that high energy banger you treat it like a concert set list you know and whatever the last song is you get it you get kind of like an encore party anthem song that those are like the two main options you get in k-pop the third option is the fan song and this might be the first or second album that i've listened to this year on camera where we've gotten a fan song as a finale and that's really refreshing to me because i don't know maybe oh excuse me maybe it's a maybe it's a timing thing maybe it's um just not as common this year as it was in previous years, but you know, there's just something so wholesome about finishing with like a thank you letter for the fans, so to speak. And 
if you can make that you know heartfelt kind of feeling towards the fans shine this brightly through the music then that's mission accomplished already that's very good wow i am so pleasantly surprised by that um i have i am currently looking at the spreadsheet on the second screen I, i'm keeping a spreadsheet to kind of lay out all my favorite releases and albums and mvs and stuff for over the course of this year i did that last year and a little bit of the year before as well but um, i can confidently say the burn album from vanner is very comfortably making this list. Like, it's... I might actually put it... It might be a very high-ranking uh, boy group album uh, in, come the end of the year. Genuinely, that's a really good album. And it's a really good album in that... I'm learning, right? Obviously... We've checked out Vanner a couple of times on the channel previously, but I don't really know Vanner at all. I didn't watch Peak Time. I I mean, I watched their Dingo Rising voice with Exonary Heroes um, when that dropped. Primarily for Exonary Heroes, but I learned about Vanner during that as well. And I haven't been following them, you know, very up close and personal. I've just been what they call you know a title track merchant so to speak but i'm really glad i pulled the trigger on this album today because this was fun this was great and i feel like i had misconceptions i think about um vanner or maybe not so much misconceptions but i didn't get the full picture of vanner's music um just by listening to you know one or two title tracks and i feel like after listening to this album i've learned a little bit more about vanner musically and what they're capable of musically because they have shown me that they're not just all about great energy and speed because they can do the light-hearted stuff as well i am i am curious to see if they have like a proper emotional ballad because they have the vocal chops to pull it off. I mean, vocally, they are very strong. But I want to see if they have any, like, almost, like, super sappy levels when it comes to ballads. Because I'd be really interested to hear what that is like, if that makes sense. Hmm. So if there aren't, do let me know. I may go check them out in my free time. But that is where I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you all for listening along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed them as much as I did. One last quest from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be checking in with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day to day. And know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.